strapped in. I like to do four points. Make sure they're tight. Some of y'all have probably noticed I don't do over the wheel. It's not because I don't like to, but it's because this particular trailer is not set up for that. So we utilize the axle on the rear. And then because of the age of this vehicle, it still has the toe slots. So I use my little baby J's on the front. Attach that to the front. Make sure everything's good and secure. Got a bit of a big girl on here today. All right, so uh, we're all loaded. Ready to get out on the road here and start putting some miles behind us. So we're heading to Tampa, Florida, which unfortunately due to ELD restrictions and you know, law book, whatnot, we're not gonna make it there today. So the goal for today is to make it to Wildwood, Florida. Um, if you have any type of trucker knowledge and know anything about the big rigs there's a uh, pretty large truck slash chrome shop there so uh we're gonna set our path to make it there um, and then go down for 10 hours get some rest then wake up tomorrow morning and we're gonna uh, finish that trip off drop in uh tampa so as you saw in the, the little segment that I included, I, I talked very briefly about how the truck wasn't equipped for uh, over the wheel straps. Now, a lot of transport has gone to that. And what I mean when I say over the wheel strap is it's a strap that actually connects into the bed of the trailer and goes around the tire from the, the bottom that meets the deck of the trailer all the way around the top back around the other side um, unfortunately my trailer doesn't have that option which is fine as you can see as you saw in the video i adapt and overcome fortunately enough for me i got my start towing cars so back when i was towing cars full-time for a towing company we utilized the the dot slots that i talked about where you saw the, the little baby j hooked into and then the axle straps that I have around the rear to do the opposing force to the rear. There's nothing wrong with the way I did it. It actually works out very well. Um, you know, it's just because I'm not set up for over the wheel, that's what we gotta do. So but let's get some miles behind us and see what's ahead of us. What's good, everybody? Stop just outside of Florence, South Carolina. We're gonna do a load check. Make sure that the straps are still tight. You know, check and load, make sure nothing shifted. Check your hubs, make sure they're not too hot. 
you should be able to put your hand on it and not burn yourself. Yeah, it's going to be hot, but it shouldn't be so hot that you immediately got to pull your hand away. You should be able to put your hand on and hold it for a little bit. Check these back straps. It's still holding up pretty good. Keep on coming around. Checking, making sure everything looks good. Check these hubs. strap so it's actually man it's, it's been kind of a dreary day no sunshine it's just been kind of kind of overcast really just trying to dodge the rain because uh, I don't really think anybody likes driving in the rain I'll tell you that the thing that's been kind of piqued my interest when I got down here to South Carolina I know in my previous video I was talking about how you, you had to account for expenses you know, like your truck payment, your trailer payment, your insurance payment, and your fuel. Well, when I left home, fuel was right at like $3.15 a gallon. I got down here in North Carolina, South Carolina area, it was almost $4 a gallon. So, I really kind of talks, or kind of leads up to what I was talking about. And fuel is a, is a big expense. And you got to be prepared for it. Not only you know having the, the fork out serious cash for it, but this is one of those times where it pays to have a larger fuel tank because you could leave one area and get fuel at a really good price, and then. Just like I just talked about getting North Carolina and it's through the roof. But if you got a bigger tank, you probably you might be able to slide through and get on the other side of that, that price hike and get somewhere where fuel is a little bit cheaper and ultimately save money. So yeah, you're gonna pay for it on the front end because these tanks ain't cheap. I mean they're they're pretty expensive, but over time it'll it'll pay itself off and you can still actually start making money because and I'm forking out serious cash per gallon for fuel. So just, just a little food for thought while we're cruising down the highway. Just wanted to take a minute to explain uh, how you can make a, a hell of a plan to uh, get somewhere and get a job done. It don't take but one accident to mess your whole day up. So. I don't think we're gonna make Wildwood, but uh, we'll try and make it as close as we can. All right, we made it to Wildwood. Surprise, surprise. I don't know how we pulled it off, but I'm gonna take it. So, got us a spot, got the curtains up. Crawl in the back here, get us some sleep. And we'll start over fresh in the morning. Stay tuned. cleaned up this is part of the day where I pull down all of my blinds as you see up here get everything packed up get ready to hit the road so if you look over my shoulder you know anything about the trucking industry one place you kind of want to stop when you're in Wildwood 
So that building over there, believe it or not, is what they call a 75 chrome shop. It's kind of like a trucking accessory shop. So let's go see what's in there. Let's let's take a little, little time off our trip and do a little explore. Nice little trip, got to see some things. Definitely check something off a bucket list. So now, it's time to get that pre-trip in, get to work. All right, so we just dropped off our uh, vehicle that was heading to Tampa. Cruising through the streets of Tampa, heading to Land of Lakes, Florida to pick up our return truck. It's a 2000 Ford F-150. So like I had said in previous in the video, this is a truck that a customer of mine had asked me to go get from his dad. They're gonna keep it in the family. It's gonna be a uh, potential third generation truck so that his son can learn how to drive on it. So we're gonna make our way over there. It looks like we got about 30 miles to go. And uh, we're gonna go scoop it up.
got it loaded up so I can probably see in the video. I want to try and take some time to get different angles to show you guys how I get everything secured down. Um, like I said earlier in the video, my trailer doesn't have slots in the bed to do what they call over the wheel straps. So I kind of do a traditional old school um, kind of rollback method to, to get things secured, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, they've been towing cars like that for years. Um, so as you guys saw on the front of the truck, I used little baby J's and on the back, I used the axle straps, which are perfect. They work fine. The whole, they're rated for the, for the weight and they're designed to do exactly what I'm doing with them. Now, I will add on a side note, can't stress this enough, man. If you guys are going to get into this hauling cars and you're know, doing automotive transport, make sure you have the right equipment for the job. Don't just come out here with your, your Walmart specials or your Lowe's specials. Oh, I just went and bought a couple cargo straps and I'm going to run it through the First of all, it's not going to work. Two, even if it does work, you stand a good chance of damaging something, tearing up a rim, possibly shredding a strap, which unfortunately, I hate to say this, could potentially lead to you losing the car off the trailer. So I can't stress this enough. Get the right straps. You know, make sure you've got the right working load limit or the WLL. It should say it right on the strap. So a good rule of thumb is you think 3,000 per strap. Okay, well, how much is that truck? Well, that truck probably weighs probably 5,000 pounds. So you go, all right, so 3,000, 3,000, and 6,000. Front two, that's 9,000, 12,000 pounds. Okay, is that overkill? Absolutely. But you want the overkill because anywhere somebody decides they have to make that right turn and they stand on their brakes and you got to lock up you don't want what you're hauling to come through them straps and come into your back and potentially hurt you because let's face it if this can come off the trailer and it's coming to you into your truck the damage is already done now we're just trying to prevent you from getting injured you, you want to be able to walk away from this so once again get the right straps if you guys want you know leave in the comments that you want to see a video on the straps and I'll, I'll go over straps because there's nothing worse than showing up and not having the right strap because it makes you look unprofessional now you're uncomfortable because you know you don't have the right stuff and three it's going to show like i like i taught man we got to have a higher level of professionalism in this industry so that's all I got on this little sneak bit. We'll get on the highway and try to put some distance between us and Florida. Uh, no offense to people that are from Florida. Uh, my body is not conducive with the 90 plus degree weather in October. So I'm heading back to Virginia. <laughs> all right, y'all, stay tuned. Dillon, South Carolina. Shut her down for the night. See you in the morning. Good morning. All right, so we're getting ready to knock out day three. The last day. We're gonna drop this truck off. That's gonna be the end of the run. Let's get this last leg done.
been a fun two and a half days we got back home safe and sound appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video I know it was kind of long um, but I mean hey it's two and a half days worth of work in a short video um, if you like please let me know give me a thumbs up like and subscribe hit the ding ding y'all take care God bless